Assalamu alaikum dear brothers and sisters, welcome to our new tutorial of the series. We are in book 1, lesson 3 and part 2. Last time we were doing the exercise at the bottom of page 14. We are going to continue from there. But before we do that, let me introduce you to something that will be very useful for us down the road inshallah. When we speak in Arabic, any word that comes out of our mouth will fall into one of the following three categories. It can be either fi'al, harf, or ism. The first category is fi'al. The fi'al is a verb in English. So, just like in English, the fi'al in Arabic may have past, present, and future tense, commands, and so on. We haven't learned any verbs yet. So we are not going to worry about this type of words very much for now. We will be introduced to a few verbs in book 1 and we will learn a lot more about them in books 2 and 3 inshallah. The second category is harf. It is often translated into English as particle. The harf does not carry a complete meaning on its own, but it is a very useful group of words to build sentences with. For example, wa is harf also na'am and la are harf consider wa which means end we expect to see words on both sides of wa right for example kitabun wa qalamun so when we say kitabun wa qalamun we are thinking of two objects together but when we say wa alone we can't think of anything that is why wa is considered harf Similarly, with na'am and la, yes and no, we have to look at the context to figure out what na'am and la are really referring to. So they do not give a complete meaning on their own. These words have to come with other words to give a complete meaning. We will start learning a lot more words of type harf in the next lesson, that is lesson 4, and you will get to know them better when you see more of them, inshallah. The third category is ism. Any word that is not fi'l or harf will be ism. This includes nouns, adjectives, adverbs, pronouns, and many more in English. Why are they all ism in Arabic while they have their own categories in English? Because they all have similar characteristics in Arabic. For example, all ism may carry attributes like definite or indefinite. We cannot say fi'l or harf is definite. Definiteness is a special characteristic of ism only. So let's keep that in mind, okay? Here is another important fact. Pretty much all the words that we learned so far, besides wa, na'am, and la, were ism. For example, kitabun, masjidun, najmun, mudarrisun. These are nouns in English, right? So they are ism in Arabic. Or maftuhun, jadidun. Kabirun, which mean open, new, and big. They all sound like adjectives in English, right? They are ism in Arabic. Hadha and dhalika are also ism. They are special type of ism, and we will talk more about them later, inshallah. Now the question is, why are we learning these categories? Because each category has its own special function in a sentence. And splitting the words into these three groups will help us better understand how the sentences are built in Arabic. Now, this was a quick overview of types of words in Arabic. Because we already know a bunch of new Arabic words by now, it will be good to keep in mind which group these words belong to. If this grouping still doesn't make complete sense to you, do not worry. I will bring it up many more times in the future so you'll get to feel much more comfortable with it over time, inshallah. For now, just keep in mind that any word that we learn will fall into one of these three categories and we are mostly going to concentrate on learning harf and ism in book 1, okay? Now let's get back to our exercise. Sentence number 5. Al-ma'u baridun. Both of these words are new. Al-ma'u means the water. And baridun means cold. So here we are saying the water is cold. What do you think al-ma'u is? Is it ism, harf, or fi'l? Definitely not fi'l, right? It's not a verb. 
How about harf? Remember, harf does not carry a meaning on its own, but alma'u means the water, so it does carry a meaning on its own. Also, notice that it has a definite article. As mentioned before, only ism can be definite or indefinite. So, alma'u has to be ism. And in this case, it is coming as a definite ism because of the prefix al and u ending. So, both the speaker and listener in this case know which water is being referred to here. Now, how about baridun, cold? Is it fa'al, harf, or ism? Definitely not fa'al. Baridun, cold, does carry an independent meaning, so it has to be ism too. Can you tell me if baridun is definite or indefinite ism? It is indefinite, right? Because of the un ending. You may ask, why is it coming as indefinite ism here? Because we are talking about the water being cold for the first time. We didn't know it was cold before. Remember the first time we mentioned we use indefinite ism? Next sentence. Al-Qamaru Jamilun. Here, Al-Qamaru means the moon and Jamilun means beautiful. So the sentence is, the moon is beautiful. Both of these words are ism because they carry meanings on their own. Al-Qamaru is definite ism because everybody knows what moon is being talked about. Jamilun is indefinite. So do you see the pattern here in all these sentences we have seen so far? The first word of the sentence is coming as definite and the second one indefinite, right? Next sentence. Al-Baytu Qaribun wal Masjidu Ba'idun. Here Qaribun is near and Ba'idun is far. So we are saying the house is near and the masjid is far. Both Al-Baytu and Al-Masjidu are coming as definite ism because we are talking about some specific house and masjid. Qaribun and Ba'idun are indefinite because we are talking about their being far or close for the first time. How about wa? Is it definite or indefinite? Well, it was a tricky question. Wa is harf and we cannot say it is definite or indefinite for harf. Only ism can be definite or indefinite. Moving on to the next sentence. Al-hajaru thaqilun wal waraqu khafifun. Here, al-hajaru is the stone, thaqilun is heavy. Al-waraqu means the paper, and khafifun means light. So the sentence is, the stone is heavy and the paper is light. Al-hajaru thaqilun wal-waraqu khafifun. Which words are definite ism here? Al-hajaru and al waraq right? And which words are indefinite ism? Thaqilun wa khafifun. Very good. Any more words left that we didn't mention here? Wa, which is harf. Okay, let's go to the next one. Al-labanu harun. Here, al-labanu means the milk and harun means hot. So, the milk is hot, is what the sentence is saying. Al-Labanu is definitism, and Harun is indefinitism, right? Final one. Al-Qamisu Nadifun. Nadifun here is clean. So we are saying the shirt is clean. I hope you are starting to see the structure of the sentence that we are learning here. The first word is what we really are talking about and it is coming as definite ism. And the second word is describing the first word and it is coming as indefinite ism. We will see a lot more sentences in this lesson that follows such structure and we will practice with them in the next few videos inshallah. We have just completed page 14. Let's finish it here for now. We learned many new words today. Please keep reviewing these words until you feel more comfortable with them. We'll continue from the next page in the next shot, inshallah. And until then, assalamu alaikum.